What's going on fight fans? Welcome to These Things Happen in MMA. The goal of the channel is to highlight crazy and spectacular moments that have made MMA what it is today. Make sure to follow the channel on social media and the link to my merch shop is down below. In this episode I'm going to talk about a historic openweight tournament from the legendary promotion Pride Fighting Championship. This is the story of the 2006 Pride World Openweight Grand Prix. The Grand Prix was set to take place between three different events in the span of four months. The tournament featured 15 of the best fighters in the world and was promoted as the winner to be crowned the one absolute champion. Introducing the fighters competing in the tournament. Dutch kickboxer, the demolition man, Alistair Overeem. Brazilian submission artist, Fabrício Verdun. New Zealand K1 champion, Mark Hunt. Japanese grappler, Siyoshi Kosaka. American wrestler, the babyface assassin, Josh Barnett. Russian Sambo champion, Alexander Emelianenko. Japanese wrestler, Kazuyuki Ironhead Vegeta. English heavyweight, the Colossus, James Thompson. Croatian kickboxer, Mirko Krokov. Japanese openweight veteran, Ikuhisa the Giant Killer, Minowa. Brazilian jiu-jitsu specialist, Antonio Minotaro Nogueira. Brazilian super heavyweight, Zulu Zinho. Japanese Olympic gold medalist, Harihiko Yoshida. And Japanese professional boxer, Yosuke Nishijima. The 15th fighter was Fedor Emelianenko, who was Pride's current heavyweight champion and looked unstoppable up to this point in his career, riding a 21-fight win streak. The last Emperor entered the tournament with the first round bye, due to his dominance and the fact that he was injured. The opening round of the Grand Prix took place on May 5, 2006 at Pride Total Elimination Absolute in the Osaka Dome. Overeem controlled most of the first round with the stand-up, however Verdum did a good job of avoiding any significant damage. Fabricio started the second round much more aggressive, and it was evident the Demolition Man was starting to fade. A tired Overeem eventually tripped Verdum, who then manages to lock in a Kimura, handing the Dutchman the first submission loss of his career. With the win, Fabricio was the first fighter in the quarterfinals. Mark Hunt had a 70 pound weight advantage over his opponent, and it was clear from the beginning that Kosaka wanted the fight on the ground. After momentarily threatening Hunt with a submission, the New Zealand native proceeded to take over the fight, landing multiple hard blows to the Japanese legend. TK's heart was on full display however as he refused to quit, and the bout was stopped at 4 minutes and 15 seconds into the second round. The victory cemented the second quarterfinalist of the tournament. Alexander is the younger brother of Fedor Emelianenko, who as mentioned earlier was also competing in the Grand Prix. That meant there was a possibility of seeing brother versus brother if both managed to advance. Because of this, there was even more intrigue around this opening round contest. The fight started with Alexander using great footwork and combinations on Barnett for much of the first round. Towards the end of it though, Emelianenko was exhausted, and the tide started to shift heading into the second. The baby-faced assassin easily secured a takedown, and moments later he submitted the Russian with an Americana at 1 minute 57 seconds into the second round. With Barnett securing the win, the first match of the quarterfinals was set. Right away, Thompson appeared massive as he plowed towards Vegeta at the beginning of the contest. Thompson's size and aggression would be his undoing though, and he gassed himself out within the first few minutes of the fight after unloading a barrage of strikes on Vegeta. Ironhead withstood the onslaught and started landing shots of his own on Thompson, who could barely keep his hands up. Moments later, Fujita knocked out the Colossus at the 8 minute 25 second mark of the first round. With that fight over with, the second match of the quarterfinals was locked in. Both fighters were extremely popular with the Japanese audience and there was a ton of excitement heading into this contest. Krokop was known for his vicious left high kick that's become a thing of legend in MMA. Minowa, on the other hand, made a career out of beating much larger opponents, earning the moniker the Giant Killer. From the jump, the power advantage of Mirko was clear, and it only took 1 minute and 10 seconds to finish the popular Japanese fighter. This would go down as the quickest match of the entire tournament, and the win moved Krokop into the quarterfinals. The super heavyweight simply known as Zulu Zinho was a massive figure, standing at 6'7 and weighing 390 pounds. This fight had the biggest weight disparity of the whole tournament, however that wouldn't stop the first ever Pride heavyweight champion as Big Knox secured a takedown and made short work of his fellow Brazilian. Nogueira won by armbar at 217 of the first round. The dominant win set up the third contest of the quarterfinals.
This was the classic striker versus grappler matchup and pitted Olympic Judo versus professional boxing. It was evident quickly that Yoshida's grappling skills were superior to Yosuke's striking. At 2 minutes and 33 seconds into the contest, Yoshida submitted Yosuke with a triangle choke. The Elite 8 was established and the next round of the Grand Prix was finalized. In the time leading up to the next event, it was announced that Fedor's injury was still lingering, forcing him to withdraw from the tournament. This created an issue as it left Fujita without an opponent. Enter current Pride middleweight champion, Vanderlei Silva. The axe murderer was known for his vicious fighting style and had been wreaking havoc in Pride for years. Fedor Emelianenko was considered to be the most dominant fighter in Pride's history, and right behind him would be Vanderlei Silva, so the substitution made sense given the circumstances. The tournament would continue roughly two months after the first event, at Pride Critical Countdown Absolute in the famous Saitama Super Arena. This fight featured two of the best Brazilian Jiu Jitsu practitioners in the world, however it would be Big Nog that would have the advantage in the standing department. Nogueira proved it by dropping Verdu multiple times, though Fabrizio was tough and hard to finish. There would be some great back and forth between both fighters with the fight ultimately going the distance. Minotaro won the contest by unanimous decision and was the first semi-finalist of the tournament. The intensity that Silva brought made everyone forget that Emelianenko was supposed to be fighting in his place. It didn't take long before these two fighters collided, with Fujita receiving the brunt of the damage. Living up to his nickname, Ironhead would survive by getting a takedown and proceeded to frustrate Silva on the ground. Eventually, the referee would stand the fighters up, and the axe murderer would slowly pick Vegeta apart. The end came at the final minute of the round with some savage blows by the middleweight champion. The brutal win advanced Silva into the semifinals. Barnett quickly smothered Hunt and controlled the fight for as long as it lasted. Soon enough, the fight would end up on the ground, with Barnett locking in a Kimura and submitting Hunt. This was Mark's second loss in Pride, and he was clearly disappointed in himself, as noted years later in his book, Born to Fight. As I walked back to the lockers, I felt embarrassed and inexperienced. I'd slacked off working on my BJJ and ground game, and a bloke I should have knocked off had put me away pretty easily. The win for Barnett solidified the first bout at the semifinals. Yoshida was able to frustrate Mirko, landing some decent strikes and closing the distance early. Yoshida continued to cause problems, until the Croatian began chopping away at the legs of the Olympian. It didn't take many before Yoshida was in serious trouble, and he was soon dropped by a hard uppercut. The judoka was all but done at this point, and one final leg kick from Mirko ended the fight at 7.38 at the first round. Just like that, the final four was established. The last stretch of the tournament would be the toughest, as it required the combatants to fight twice in one night. Energy management was critical, as there wasn't much time between contests. The fighters would compete at the very beginning of the show, with the winners to face off in the main event roughly two hours later. The tournament concluded at Pride Final Conflict Absolute on September 10th and was again showcased at the Saitama Super Arena. This was a highly anticipated contest and a rematch of a classic fight which ended in a draw back at Pride 20 in 2002. The contest started with some wild exchanges thrown by Vanderlei, and it didn't take long before Krokop landed decent counters of his own. Mirko connected with a straight left that nearly closed Silva's eye, and for a moment it appeared this dream matchup was in jeopardy of being called off by the medical staff. However, the fight continued, and Krokop pressured the compromised Silva. Five and a half minutes in, the Croatian landed his patented left high kick and knocked Vanderlei out cold, handing him the most brutal loss of his career. The knockout would go down as one of the most memorable in Pride's history. With that win, Mirko was heading to the finals. This was a great matchup between two former champions with excellent ground skills. Minotaro would use his jab to pepper Barnett while remaining at distance. Surprisingly though, Barnett would be the one to drop Noguera early. From there on it would be a back and forth grappling war, with both fighters trading positions and submission attempts for the rest of the contest. In the end, Josh won a very close split decision and advanced to the finals. Now all that remained was to put an end to one of the biggest MMA tournaments ever assembled. After a couple of hours, the conclusion of the Grand Prix would finally be determined. Krokop didn't waste any time, and visibly hurt the youngest ever UFC heavyweight champion with multiple body kicks before a cut caused a pause in the action. 
When the fight resumed, it was more of the same, as the Croatian sensation continued to dismount the Barnett. After a few body shots, Barnett would fall and appear to be in survival mode as he winced in pain on the ground. Moments later, Mirko landed a shot to Barnett's right eye that caused him to scream out in agony, and tap due to the pain. On his 32nd birthday, Mirko Krokop became the 2006 Pride World Grand Prix Champion. Usually having a very stoic demeanor, when the fight was over, the Croatian couldn't help but be overcome with emotion. Alright, Mirko, I, all I can say is finally. It's been long overdue for you. We know that you've been wanting to get a championship like this forever. Now, what's next? To be honest, I don't know. I just want to take a rest and... Uh, but I, only I can say is that this is my happiest day in my life, definitely. I was waiting for this for 10 long years and I proved to all the people who were talking that I'm finished, that I'm done after Fedor's fight, that I am number one. Believe it or not, and I swear with everything I got, I told myself, if I don't, if I don't take this belt, it will be my last MMA fight in my life. I would quit fighting, I swear. This would be the pinnacle of Prokop's career and set up a huge rematch with Fedor Emelianenko in what was one of the best heavyweight fights of all time. The MMA gods can be cruel though, and as fate would have it, that rematch would never come to fruition. Amazingly, Krokop would win two more Grand Prix before the end of his career. In 2012, he won the K1 World Grand Prix in his home country of Croatia. And in 2016, 10 years after winning the Pride Tournament, he won the Risen World Openweight Grand Prix. Mirko's career is a legendary one, and as of this recording, he's the only mixed martial artist to ever win three World Grand Prix. His left high kick was so effective that it even spawned its own catchphrase. Right leg hospital, left leg cemetery. The 2006 Pride Tournament is one of the best ever assembled and featured a plethora of famous competitors. Let us never forget this amazing piece of MMA history and may Pride never die. As always, I posted some related videos down below for those interested in taking a look. Please like, subscribe, and leave a comment down below with a topic you'd like to hear me cover in a future episode. Again, don't forget to follow the channel on social media and the link to the merch shop is down below. Thanks for watching and supporting my channel. Thank Did you, he have the hardest leg kicks you've ever felt? Uh, Crow Cop. Crow Cop? Really? Yeah. Wow. That's crazy. Well, I would I would imagine. I mean, if anybody. Okay, here's a, here's a it's just a crow cop story. So, it's me and Mirko and Eric Paulson, and we're training in Vegas. And Mirko came out, so we're rolling around and training together and having a good time. And Paulson's holding pads for me, and Mirko's like, ah, do this with your left hook instead. All right, how about? Nah, that's not it. Nah, no, no, no. Here, let me show you. Here, you hold the pad. So Paulson's got this full-on tie pad, leather tie pad. Yeah. So Mirko's like, no, I want you to do this. You know, you, you're doing it like X. So I need you to do it like this. So watch. Ah, and he hits this, he right hooks this pad, this tie pad. It goes, it tears the straps off of Paulson's arm and it goes flying across the room and hits the wall and bounces off the wall and falls on the fucking ground. I just went, see, I, I took that. that. That's what I was getting hit with and I still managed to stay on my feet. This guy is just, at his best, it's just absolute pure, like, explosive power, just, just destruction.